What's up guys, DRock1992 here for this next video and for my final Bond actor in my Bond marathon I'm going to be talking about the most current James Bond man uh, James Bond man playing James Bond, Daniel Craig Um, this portrayal at this moment um, you know, Daniel Craig's portrayal at the moment is a, is a good portrayal his bond is different than other bonds because, yes, he's man, he's he's ruggish, he's buff, he's he's a man's man, but he also is a very vulnerable bond. Daniel Craig plays James Bond with a heart on his, um, you know, with his heart on his sleeve. Basically, he's um, a very complicated James Bond. He's vulnerable. Uh, he is basically a different Bond. He has played Bond in three Bond films, with a fourth one coming out, which I will talk about. But getting right into it, I'm going to actually... Um, let me see here. I'm going to get right into it with, a film, uh, with his filmography. And his film debut was in 1992, year I was born, The Power of One. And then, the, and then a couple years later in 1995, he starred in the movie A Kid in King Arthur's Court. I just mention it because I've heard of the movie before. Um, and he was in it in a supporting role. <clears throat> Early Bond or er, early pre Bond roles, you know. In 1998, he starred in the movie Elizabeth, a basically a biopic about Queen Elizabeth the First. Kate Blanchett played Queen Elizabeth the First. Daniel Craig had a very small role in the movie, very small. Um. In 2001, he was in Laura Croft Tomb Raider, a small role as well, uh, the Angelina Jolie action film. 2002, he was in the movie Road to Perdition, uh, the Tom Hanks movie. Um, 2004, he was in the movie Layer Cake. He played, his character was Quadruple X. Interesting character. And he had a starring role in the film. It was, uh, I don't know, it just seems like it would be a breakout for him in film. Kind of breakthrough. Um, you know, I just see, it just seems like they would be a breakout for him in film. Um, which it probably was. I'm not really completely sure because I haven't seen the movie. But yeah, Layer Cake, I've seen, you know, I've heard about the movie, so I talked about it. That's why I'm talking about it. And then, in 2006, uh, Daniel Craig becomes the next James Bond. Actually, I think it was 2005 or something like that. Uh, I don't know exactly when he became James Bond, but I can tell you this, a lot of people hated the move. A lot of people hated the move because Daniel Craig was pretty short for James Bond. James Bond's about six foot or so, and Daniel Craig is, I think, below six feet. And he was blonde at the time of accepting the James Bond role. People just didn't think he was the right Bond. And there was a lot of backlash against him. It's kind of like what I was talking about with Timothy Dalton. Um, and, you know, kind of like what I was talking about with Timothy Dalton and the fact that not a lot of people like the move. But Daniel Craig would prove a lot of people wrong. Um, 2006, he stars in his first Bond appearance, Casino Royale. Not the 1967 weird version, but the 2006 Casino Royale. And it's a big success. The movie is a big success. Um, 
when I saw it in theaters, this was the first Bond movie I've ever seen in theaters. So it holds some significance to me in that aspect. I've seen like I've seen three Bond films in theaters. The other two I'll talk about after, but Casino Royale. Um, when I watched it at first, it was complicated. It it you know you didn't know who was the villain in the movie, the major villain. <clears throat> There's a villain named Lashif, who you thought was the main villain, but doesn't turn out to be the main villain. There's a villain called Mr. White who is the head of an uh, evil organization. Um, kind of shades of Blofeld in that aspect. But Casino Royale, according to Rotten Tomatoes, was a huge success of a film. It's one of the highest rated films on Rotten Tomatoes. So it has that going for it. Um, 2008, a couple years later, he comes out with Quantum of Solace, his second Bond appearance. Now, a lot of people, a lot of critics didn't really like the film as much. It is one of the lower rated Bond films. But I liked it. It wasn't too bad. Um, I mentioned uh, the woman Olga Kurilenko in um, my Pierce Brosnan video. She was the Bond girl in Quantum of Solace. Along with, you know, Daniel Craig, obviously, is Bond. And... Yeah, I like Quantum of Solace. It's a movie I can watch again, for sure. It's um, I think it's a good Bond movie. In 2011, he stars in the movie Cowboys and Aliens, which is a very kind of weird premise. Westerns meets science fiction. I think it's Western meets science fiction. And Daniel Craig's the main star. And then you have heavyweights like Harrison Ford, Harrison frickin' Ford, and Olivia Wilde. Um, and the movie was... actually didn't really make a lot of money at the box office. And Cowboys and Aliens itself had mixed reviews um, on Rotten Tomatoes, 44%. But, um, then another famous film he was in in 2011 was The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo. And, interesting film. I mean, it's a dark, I think it's a very dark type of film. And Daniel Craig is the main star in the movie. Uh, along with uh, Rooney Mara, who I've never heard of. But, The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo, I think a very popular film. And he was in it. And then, one of the best Bond films of all time, in the opinion of a lot of people, myself included, uh, was 2012 Skyfall. This is Bond's mo This is Craig's most recent portrayal as James Bond. It came in 2012, and Skyfall was a massive success. It just... It was the 50th anniversary of James Bond. And it hit, it hit a big home run. It hit a home run with a lot of Bond fans. A lot of Bond fans love this movie. And, um, you know, you know um, it is probably the best. It is the best Bond film with Daniel Craig. It is my favorite with Daniel Craig as Bond. It's a really good Bond film. And I, I've watched it a couple of times now. And it's... What can you say about it? It's really good. <clears throat> a lot of the um, old Bond type gadgets come into play in this movie. They pay a lot of tribute to older Bond things like the Aston Martin, which first, first was prominent in Goldfinger, the car that Bond drove. That came into play in Skyfall. And um, overall, Skyfall's just a great movie with Javier Bardem as the villain. Boy, is Javier Bardem fruity. For a creepy, fruity type Bond villain. You know, one of the best Bond villains that's considered by a lot of people. But um, it, it's just. Skyfall 
a huge success. And then, the next James Bond film that's coming, and the only film coming thus far for Daniel Craig that I see, is the for his fourth Bond, Bond portrayal in the movie Spectre. It was just announced that the Bond film is called Spectre. Um, it is coming out next year, November 6th. It is the movie that I am looking forward to. It's one of the top movies. Um, what is significant about this? Christoph Waltz is in it. I really like Christoph Waltz as an actor. You know, I've seen him in a couple of films, and I like him. Um, and he plays a good villain. And Christoph Waltz will play the Bond villain. And it is rumored, Spectre is the evil organization that Ernst Starblow Blofeld leads, heads, basically. He is the leader of Spectre. And that was, Spectre was prominent in the earlier Bond films. There is rumors that Christoph Waltz may actually end up playing Blofeld. Uh, there is a woman named Leia Seydoux who's going to be one of the Bond girls. And then a woman m called Monica Bellucci. What is significant about Monica Bellucci is that she is the oldest Bond girl. She will be the oldest Bond girl ever. Honor, Honor Blackman in Goldfinger was 49 when she played Pussy Galore in Goldfinger. She was the oldest, but Monica Bellucci is going to be the oldest. Um, Dave Bautista from Guardians of the Galaxy and uh, Wrestling, I believe, he's going to be in the movie as a Bond henchman. And Ralph Fiennes will reprise his role as M. Um... For those of you who don't know, Judy Dench actually retired from the role as M in Skyfall. She portrayed M in seven Bond films. Skyfall was her last appearance. Ralph Fiennes became M in uh, at the end of Skyfall, and this will be his first full movie as M in uh, Spectre. But yeah, this movie looks very interesting. It looks good. Um, I am really looking forward to it. And then there is a good premise for it, which I will read. A cryptic message from an unlikely source sets James Bond navigating the layers of a sinister organization known as Spectre. As M continues fighting political pressures that threaten the future of MI6, the organization that Bond works for, Bond draws closer to uncovering a hidden truth that threatens to destroy everything that he has fought to protect. The premise right there has me sold completely. And I cannot wait to see a trailer for the movie. I just can't wait to see the movie, period. It, I mean, it has a lot to live up to. It has a budget of $300 million dollars. They're going big and bold with this Bond movie. That just tells me that they're going big and bold with the Bond movie, and they're banking on it to become a big success. For this movie to work, it has to be a great movie beyond Sky Skyfall. It has a lot of pressure after the move after Skyfall, which was a great Bond movie. You know, it has a lot of pressure to replicate the success or even outdo the success of Skyfall. I get the feeling it's going to be a huge success. You know, Skyfall was a billion dollar film. It made 1.2 billion, I think it was. Spectre could make one it could make a billion dollars yet again at the box office. Skyfall was the high is the highest grossing Bond film of all time. There's a chance that Spectre could beat that. There's a chance even that Spectre could make a billion, 1.2 billion, 1, 1 billion even, 1.1 billion. You know, we'll have to see. But I'm looking forward to this movie for sure. And that is it for... Actually, no. Um, my mistake, I have yet to talk about his television career, which I will a little bit. Um... 
1993, he starred in uh, Zorro, which... Uh, Zorro is a famous character in Spanish history. He starred in a couple episodes in a TV series uh, called Zorro. Um, uh, 1993, there's a TV show called The Young Indiana Jones Chronicles. Um, there was a television series. And Daniel Craig was in one of the episodes early on, um, excuse me, um, and then the other one that I'm going to mention is a couple of years ago, he actually hosted Saturday Night Live, and I, rem I watched the episode, and I remember, from what I remember, he did a good job, um, yeah, from what I remember, he did a good job in that, in that, uh, in Saturday Night Live. And he hope you know he hosted once. Um, and in video games, he uh, you know he voiced himself. He voiced James Bond in 007: Quantum of Solace, Goldeneye 007, James Bond 007: Bloodstone, Goldeneye 007: Reloaded. So it looks interesting, you know. Um, he portrayed Bond in some video games as well, which is neat. You know, um, Sean Connery did that as well, portraying Bond in the video game from Russia with Love. And that is it for the Daniel Craig video. Uh, before I go, uh, Daniel Craig, you know, I really hope he's a big success in future Bond films. He is actually signed for another Bond film after Spectre. So we'll have to see how he does in the next two, definitely. He's 46 years old, too, so it won't be too much of a long time until I think we get a new James Bond. And really briefly, I'm going to talk about a guy who is rumored to be the next James Bond. Recently, the Sony leaks came out. There were Sony leaks that came out from the, from the Sony company. In one of the leaks... The woman who is in charge of uh, Sony, this woman named Amy Pascal, she says that she wants Idris Elba to play James Bond. For those of you who don't know, um, Idris Elba is um, a famous British actor, and one of the big things, Idris Elba is black. If he becomes James Bond, he would become the first James Bond actor who is black. Very significant. I mean, it would be very monumentally significant uh, that, you know, you get your first James Bond character who is first James Bond who's black. Um, yet there's a lot of people who think that Idris Elba could be the next James Bond. If he is, great. As long as he plays a good James Bond, I don't care about the skin color at all, you know, as long as he plays the character well. That's it. So that's it for the video on Daniel Craig. Uh, DRock1992 out.